Hey, what's up? We should be live. Let me just check real fast on YouTube that everything is going uh, according to plan. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Let me see. View on YouTube. I always have to confirm. Let's see if it actually starts. Uh, so I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you so, so much for being here. Here I am. Here is my face. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, doing this stream from StreamYard, so I can definitely do this kind of a thing. So if you can, please drop a like. It helps uh, this stream reach more people. I wasn't planning on, but I was just a little careless and ended up going with StreamYard. It was just my inadequ inadequacy in planning this live stream. But in any case, thank you so much for being here. It's going to be a fun one. Um, I'm keeping the stage of this stream pretty open, so we can do whatever you want. We can do Q and A. We can do, but but I do want to be able to demonstrate. So I have some blocking board paper, which I'm still experimenting with. I'm uh, trying to see uh, how I like it. Let me know. You can hear me well if there are any audio issues. Hey, John, how are you? Uh, John says, hi, Leron. I hope you're well, my friend. Thank you. Hey, Ambi. Hi, Leron. I'm sorry I haven't been around for some time. Normally, my drum cycle is on Thursday, but today I'm able to be here. Oh, cool. So welcome, uh, Ambi. Very glad to have you here. And drum circle sounds really cool. Uh, so yeah, hey, Kate. Uh, good morning from North Carolina. Hey, Christine Bourgeois. It feels like it's been a while since I did a stream. I don't know why. Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of this banner for a moment here. Um, it says, hello, all. We have Crispy in the house. Hey, Leron, I'm here as well since I don't have to walk the dog I'm taking care of. Sadly, dogs are the best. Yeah, 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 definitely are. And I have a surprise to show you here. There's a cute little fellow on the on the on uh, on my couch. Let me show you one second. I okay, can pull this out. And then we'll do this kind of a thing. So you can't see it, but let me just, I'm going to show you. We'll do um, this. And can you see this pupper? <laughs> Maybe it's not uh, focused well, but so that's my bad because it's not an autofocus. But we're doing a foster thing um, for this cute, cute dog. Maybe I'll, I can share like a picture from, how did, I, how did I set it up? Here we go. Maybe I can share a picture from my phone. It will give you a better view. Some have seen it on, on Discord. but. We're doing a foster thing for a little pupper, and he's super cute, sleeps all the time, pees everywhere, but the pads we put. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, hey, Marietta, hello from Spain. Thank you for being here. Hey, Lynn, good evening from Australia. Hey, Vespa before Jen, good morning from Truckee, California. Uh, uh, hopefully, that's California, not Canada. Sorry, I'm going to use this tutorial to practice with a friend. Cool, cool. So, we'll try and do something fun. Uh, Amy Whetstone, hi, Leron from South Carolina, USA. Uh, it's Reza. Hi, I started watercolor two months ago and discovered your channel recently. Amazing vids, very useful, well explained. Thank you so well. Thank you so so much. I'm so happy to hear. Um, it's fun to always hear when people discover the channel for the first time. Uh, hey, sweet dog. Yeah, he, he's really cute. Uh, I'll I'll give you a better view later on. But yeah, it's really it's really fun for me to hear whenever people discover the channel. Um, and very happy I can help in any way. I'm sweating because I literally had to run here with a lot of heavy weight just to get here in time. Um, so I have a few artworks to show you. Some of them you have probably seen. Um, a few things I've been working on, and then we can jump into techniques. So I actually want this to be all about whatever you ask me. So just hit me with a comment um, in the chat. Let me know what you want me to show or demonstrate. Uh, if not, I'll just wing it, but I think it's going to be fun. Uh, let me start with this uh, painting that I have shared pretty much everywhere. Um, from the Squid Game. <laughs> I don't know if the, so the audio quality seems kind of not too well. Let me, uh, not audio, video. Uh, let me see if it's just on my end. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Why is the camera? There we go, I think that's better. So yeah, <laughs> I did this one uh, from the Squid Game. A lot of people liked it. It was fun to work with that kind of a blurry effect in the background. And you can see it everywhere on Instagram here on YouTube. So it was just a very fun and challenging painting to do. Um, I actually plan, let me leave this for a moment. I actually planned on doing another one from the show, and I have, mm -hmm. for anyone who's watching, if you haven't watched, sorry, but I did this portrait of the, um, I actually have his name somewhere, let me check. Hyosung Tai, or Tay. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that's the guy, you know, the, the mobster guy from the show, so that was pretty fun. Um, too much French ultramarine, which is something we will talk about. I have this tendency that I need to get rid of. Uh, but let's see what you're saying in the chat. Anayansi says, Greetings and blessing to all from Houston, Texas. Cool. Thank you for being here. Roman Diazzi, following you from Montevideo. Cheers. 
Montevideo, the hometown of Alvaro Castanet. Sunflower Cherry Flower says, hey, sir. Hey, thank you for being here. Best for our junior partner is fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, this it was really tough, actually. I, I did everything in the background pretty much wet and wet, except for this section. Um, I did want to film the process, but some of these processes, it requires so much attention that there's just no way I can film while doing them. I'm not, not good enough, I'll just say that. Um, and this one, so this kind of reminds me personally of the portrait I did of Arya Stark. And actually, let me do this. You may be able to see it better here. Yeah, so I think this actually looks better here on this camera. Right, I think the colors look a little better. The quality looks a little better. Um, so yeah, I did this one. Where should I? I never know how to hold it. Let's go like this. <laughs> so I just finished this one today. Um, a bit too heavy on the French ultramarine. I need to start incorporating more neutral tint, which I was actually supposed to get today uh, from Amazon. But so it's so weird. I ordered four items. One of them is this case for my for my new iPhone, and I got three out of the four items. And one is like a separate shipment. I've never had that happen to me. And the funny thing is, it's a huge box with tons of free space. So why not just throw in there the neutral tint that I ordered? So I don't know, but uh, I, I really want to try and work with more colors for the dark values. I find that I don't like this color combination as much, but I do like the portrait. Um, so let's see what you are saying. Now let me go back to this format. I know the quality isn't as good, but that's fine. Uh, Vespa Forge and says portraits, portraits, I love yours, thank you. Uh, Pence Palacio says, hi, Leron, good to be back. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I haven't seen you uh, in a while here, I think, or were you last week? I don't remember. Uh, it really feels like I haven't streamed in ages. I don't know why. Uh, Linda says, hi, from Quebec, Canada. Pence Palacio also says, I've been so busy lately because of med school. Yes, I'll uh, be hanging out with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and that if you if you have anything to do, you know, no worries. You can watch it after the fact or don't watch it. That's fine. Uh, but how is it going with med school? That, that has to be really intense. Um, Barb says hi from Ohio and Pence, I just miss hanging out. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm really happy to have you here. Um, it's fun. It's it's a fun escape. And sometimes you can do things while, while watching. Sometimes you can't, depending on what you do. But for me, I enjoy these streams because I can paint, I can draw while I'm listening. Uh, Sunflower says very creative. Do you have more uh, watercolor portraits? Uh, yeah, I have a few here I can pull out. By the way, I don't know why I just changed the focus to be manual. Why is it going all of a sudden uh, to be yeah, manual. Why is it going? Um, uh, why is it auto? I set it to manual. Stay manual, please. Thank you. Good. Uh, oh, and we have a first time um, watcher. Baby says, this is my first time on your live stream. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, very grateful. Uh, Mariana says, I've been painting with watercolor almost two years and I feel I know nothing. Yes, same here. Six years and still nothing. Seven. There's so much to learn all the time. Of course I am. Hi, everyone. I hope you're good. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a few, actually, let me go here. Uh, no, sorry. Let me go here. It's been a few intense weeks, days, obviously, because of the pup, puppy, um, but also a few intense weeks of me trying to find the things that make me happy and things that are authentic to my path. I'm going to release a fun video uh, on Saturday that's a little bit different, a little bit out there. So I hope you'll enjoy that. Just a bit of a different uh, track of mind recently. The, the one thing I can always fall back on and find a lot of joy in is watercolor. That's the funny thing. Um, it's just that, you know, it's watercolor. Um, it's painting. I could paint all day long. I, the only thing that comes then is guilt that I have other things to do. That guilt is something that it's there and I, I can recognize it, but it's not something that I think comes from an authentic place. It comes from fear of needing to. I need to make money, need to do this, need to do that. It's just crap. Honestly, the one thing I need to focus on is the creation. Uh, so actually, let me show you a few other things here. I have this painting of a tractor that I showed you. Uh, I showed it like really recently. Um, but I really like this one. This was the first painting ever I did on the Bucking Ford paper. So here it feels a little more natural. So this was the first painting I did on the Bucking Ford paper. Um, it was very interesting. And John, thank you so much for sending me the paper. This, um, it's very interesting. I didn't even read the properties. So let's see, there's 12 sheets, right? And I knew that it's cold press, not uh, 300 grams. Oh yeah, so I knew most of it, uh, mold made. So I'm not really sure how this differs from other brands, but it 
so far it has been a good paper to me. I can feel the difference a bit from something like Saunders and Arsh, when Arsh were good. Now I don't know, it depends, it's a hit or miss, but uh, I can feel the difference, but I actually really, uh, really like how it handled. Um, it's a bit of it, and it could be fun to show you a comparison actually. So maybe I'll bring up the the photo. Oh yeah, I don't e I don't even know if I can. I can show you on my phone. Um, let's see if I can show you on my phone the photo that um, that I painted this based on. Because I'm doing this in Streamyard, so of course I showing photos isn't really as as easy or straightforward. I just don't like the way it works. Um, so let me find it real quick. It was a picture I took not too long ago, um, and some somehow. Sometimes the paintings that that you do the most spontaneously. Let me turn it to airplane mode so I don't I don't know get any weird messages or something like that. So let me see here. Um, there we go. So this is the picture. And if you want to compare it, if you can, see. Um, so sometimes these pieces that you do really. In, in the most, I guess, um, spontaneous fashion, end up looking the best in a way. Let me switch back from flight mode. Good. Um, end up looking the best, they're the freshest, they're the most fun, you know. I really like how it turned out. I had a bit of a difficulty with the second and third layers. Um, it still got the result I wanted, mostly, but it, it felt a little different, the glazing. So I felt like I'm running a bit of a risk of reawakening a layer. Um, not so much. It didn't really happen, but just maybe a bit. So it's not definitely better than uh, consonant volume papers that are pulp and really, you know, reawaken super easy. Um, I don't know if it's as good as Arsh, but I, it, it's close. It's close. And if th if this is priced better, I definitely consider it. If you you're looking for a cheaper paper, um, so that's it's a good discovery. Uh, Anayansi says, love your new fur baby. Yeah, so it's a temporary babysitter. Hopefully, they'll they'll find a home for him because I didn't show you, but let's see if I can show you. You know, I'm all over, but should I just rotate the computer and show you? Let's see. Because now he's in an angle where you'll actually see him well. So let me do this. There we go. <laughs> he's sleeping there. So yeah, he's cute. Uh, he actually has two casts on his legs here. I know it's barely visible because they found him with broken, uh, fractured, I guess, uh, two fractures, I think, too, in every, in, in two, in his front left and, and, and left hind leg. Um, so I don't know what will, uh, what will happen and how easy it's going to be to find a home, but he's running around like nothing. So I, I don't really think it's going to be a problem, but. No, uh, but he's he's really jumping around, no problems. Ruth hates him because she hates dogs, but that's fine. Uh, Pencil, I sent another painting and did impart the words that you've said when you critiqued my Kalnish stone painting. Hope you can check it out. Yes, I'm super behind on emails. My apologies to everyone who's waiting and expecting your response. I am I'm very behind on emails, uh, but I will do a consolidated session where I reply to all. Uh, I've been focusing a lot on the upcoming course. I can actually show you... Um, Drawing from there to uh, painting from there too. D Johnson, good morning from Iowa. Of course, Sam says, Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, definitely. Let me show you what was the other interesting thing. Yeah. So, a couple of things that are more um, drawing. I, I feel like I'm getting close to starting to work on the name for the manga. I'm really deep in the character design, but I just wanted to show you this exercise. Um, you will see more of it, I think, in, in the upcoming Saturday's video. But basically what I did was, I'll show you. So very often we like to jump into doing these kinds of things. Not necessarily manga style drawings, but something that has a finished quality to it. So like drawing an actual existing character. Now, one of the things I want you to consider is for the person who drew these originally, a lot of knowledge was already there. And let me move this so it doesn't bounce as much. A lot of knowledge was involved. And I didn't feel com comfortable. I felt like I'm getting things wrong. Why? Because the understanding of the face, my understanding of the different planes of the head and the face wasn't good enough. So I did get a few decent ones like this one that I really like, but it's not perfect and things are a little off and it frustrated me. So. I dove a little deeper on faces, so you can see it here. 
um, and really understanding the shape of every plane of the face. And it's not easy, but eventually I produced something that a few of them that I really liked. I couldn't get the nose right. I talked about this uh, in other places too. The nose was a huge challenge. So I took a break and just focused on noses. Um, but it's just to show you that none of this really comes easy necessarily. It does take a lot of repetition. Uh, just to really understand what you're looking at. This may seem a little robotic, but it actually really helped me. Um, because then I was able to uh, design a character for the manga. I shared it in the stories today too, I think. Uh, it's not here, it's in a different sketchbook. But it really helped me with um, drawing things more correctly, I guess. The, the thing is that, that drawing correctly is more important than... Um, drawing beautiful you know sometimes you'll draw something and it's just it's just good enough and that's that's all you need but you need it to be correct you need to understand the basic shapes and how they're built so it's really important um so let's see here uh mb says poor little puppy hope you will do fine yeah i think he will uh christine so good of you to foster my dog hates other dogs too yeah ruth she starts to accept him but honestly i just hope she's happy you know that she's she accepts him even though she tolerates him, I hope she is herself is still happy, even though he's here. Uh, Sunflower says, can you paint watercolor food item or product? Yeah, that could be fun. We, we can do that today, actually. So let me open up the uh, St. Uh, Cuthbert Mill walking forward paper, and let's do some stuff here. Um, one thing that I, that I like about um, sketching is that I actually do have a set list if you will now, let me remove the tape here so i can set this aside i do have let me bring this uh i do have a set of uh exercises that i that i know i can fall back on whenever i need to uh warm up or even just not to fall back on but just do to warm up um and with watercolor i have a few uh also not as frequent, but I will show you some. And one thing I, I really like doing, I learned from Stan Miller, as many of the things I learned. Um, and that it's just a fun exercise that, that I think uh, people can benefit from. So let me actually get this to be a little closer to your desk. So you can see some more details. This. The puppy has a cage, by the way, you know, as puppies do. Um, and he, he's actually really cool with it. He has no problems. But but at night, if we leave him there, he cries. So that's, so that's a problem. Uh, so yeah, one of the things I like to do... Um, oh, Baby says, I don't I know nothing about watercolor uh, or drawing or watercolor, and I want to learn, but I, I really don't know what to start with. Uh, if you're in this place, just start with something. Honestly, just look at something and try and draw it, um, like the bottle I have here. I wasn't planning on doing drawing, but... I want you to even, before you learn structure, before you start getting into deeper stuff, you just look at something like the bottle that's right in front of me uh, that you, I'll show you. It's just here, bottle. <laughs> and, um, and you just draw it. Okay, so let me show you. You just, and we can even paint it afterwards. But so yeah, so I'll start with something and you won't get it right. Let me, let me work left hand so that we'll see how bad I am with left hand drawing. You won't have the coordination required and you won't even have the observational skills required. So you'll get things often very inaccurately. But the more you do it, a lot of people think it's just about coordination. It's actually not. A lot of it has to do with your um, understanding of the subject you're drawing. So here I am drawing with my left hand. Let me close the window so there isn't too much of that really blinding light. I know it's a little darker, but I think it's better. Um, and, you, and you see, and then you start, okay, so this goes down here like that, and you try, right? I should do a, more videos of left-handed drawing and, and painting. Um, I don't practice it at all. I know some artists are crazy and they actually practice it to make sure if they uh, lose use of their arm, which is a little tragic, but you know, they're ready. So you see, and then there's this holder thing. I know you can't see the reference, my apologies. Um, and then it goes down like that, using my shoulder to get this long of a line to work, right? 
find something that looks cool and try and draw it and see what happens. Um, if you don't know where to start, maybe it's not that important where you start. Maybe you just need to start. Now, just uh, let's do a comparison. That could be fun. So if I have to draw this with my right hand, and I'll, I'll even stick to this sketchy style. You see, some of it is coordination, but the fact that I was even able to produce something with the left hand uh, is, is thanks to an understanding of how three-dimensional shapes work. And of course, ideally, I would draw the entire thing first. So let's use the, the pencil that's actually in good condition. So you see, obviously, this one's a little more polished. But you have to start somewhere, right? So and then that merges into here. And then that connects here. See? So that's the difference between uh, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, right? And you can probably see it better here. I really need to get a new camera. This one sucks. There you go. Uh, so I wasn't planning on doing any uh, drawing, but just for fun. Let me see if I can open it just a bit. And. Sorry about the shakiness. Also adjusted my light just to have a bit of a better light there. Uh, but yeah, it's super light too. So if you want to see something, I have to go over the lines. And if you don't know what to paint, you just choose something because it doesn't matter because you don't know what you want to paint and you just paint it. So just go with the flow. The cap's a little dark. So maybe use some black paint. And then... You see there are some areas that are lighter. I'm not going to paint with my left hand, no, no chance. Uh, but I should, I should do more of that. So you see, you just paint. You put the paint in, look at it move, observe it, right? That's I, I want to help you develop this approach of just fun, easygoing, you know, no, not too much pressure, enjoying the creation. And then you can add on top of that technique and learn how to do more advanced stuff. And if the if the drawing is decent, half decent, you get quite a lot of um, beauty out of a lot of different drawings. So let's do a bit of wet and wet here. You see a bit of wet and wet inside the cap. It's very fun, kind of all prima style, maybe a bit of a darker shadow there. See, it's kind of starting to make sense. Maybe at some point you learn that you can blur some stuff here. Scars, I see you. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the message in just a moment. Hope you're feeling well. We have corresponded via email for uh, anyone who's curious. Um, and then you continue here with a bit more green. You don't know how to mix green. You just use a bit of blue and a bit of yellow. And you're like, okay, so I got this kind of a green. Let's add a bit of this very strong emerald-ish green. And everything will turn out terrible at first. You won't be able to get anything to look the way you want. Uh, you'll have to practice till you're able to. So the paper's surface feels a little different. Now I, I realize the thing that I felt. You see how the, the it's like the paint stays a little longer on the surface, which is interesting. Now let me use a bit of darker paint there on the right side. And I know you can barely see my palette. Sorry about that. A bit of a dark paint, a bit of a dark paint here where the uh, water is concentrated, where the edge of the water is concentrated. Maybe, maybe you turn this around to help the paint move a bit like this, and you got something nice, you know, you got something. Point, don't overthink it. Now, if you want to make it look really cool, you just add a cast shadow like this, and that's it. You got something. You can, of course, come back with some water, help it move. That's the approach I want you to slowly develop. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. Just start by painting. You know, Joseph's book, which says, I just paint. That's the thing he started doing from the beginning. First thing first, top priority is to just paint. Um, and if you do that, I honestly believe you'll get to where you want to be. 
Um, I can't really guide you to anywhere. You need to figure out the direction you want to take. Uh, and if you don't know, you need to figure it out. And that's actually the topic of the video I'll do on uh, Saturday. I want to show you some lifting, right? There's a highlight here. I can go back and lift it like that. See, that looks cute. Then there's another one here. I can go back and lift that too. So there we go. It's just a fun process. Um, you have to learn to enjoy it. Enjoy the successes and the failures. I can add a background now, make this pop. It's crazy, like crazily. Get the, the cap to really pop. Let's do that just for fun. And then I do want to go back to some of your comments. So if I just use dark enough paint on the background, you see one thing leads to another. And then hopefully, before you know it, you're having fun. So I can use a bit of a darker color here. And you'll see how it makes this pop. And I have no reference for this. The, the light looks very different where I'm looking. But you know, just for fun. And then maybe it ends right here, which is perfect for our contrast. And you see how this makes the bottle pop because dark and light contrast is what makes things pop, makes things interesting sometimes, you know. See, something like that. Let's see, it ends here. And we got this cool little thing that took like a moment to paint, right? And it doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be, it could be an abstract painting. You can just put a few brush marks and say, oh, this is my painting. Let's turn this into a diagonal so that we fill in this entire area. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just, you know, playing around with the paint. That tends to produce sometimes interesting results. Uh, so there we go. And then you learn with time that your washes aren't fresh and that you're doing things over and over and they don't look good. And then you learn how to improve that aspect and this aspect. You just got to start somewhere. So let's see here. Sharon uh, McPherson says, good afternoon, Liron, watching from the small island um, Burnaray, uh, Western Isles, Scotland. Cool. I, I had no idea there's a place like that. So <laughs> learned something new. That's really cool, Sharon. Ben Spalacio, I purchased my core watercolors, and man, they're phenomenal. Oh, these I still need to try. Everyone says they're so good, and I can't believe I still haven't tried them. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, the science the science is rule. <laughs> Greetings, Liron. Hey, uh, thank you for being here. Hey, Scars. Hi, Liron. How fair. The interesting stuff. Thank you so much. I hope you're feeling well and doing well. Uh, keep me posted. As always, I see people are happy to see you here. Um, so welcome aboard as always. John A. Scars, good to see you. Thank you so much. Everyone's so cool and nice. Good job on that artwork. Thank you, Sunflower. Uh, Richard Bennett says, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here, Richard. Hi, John. Good to see you. <laughs> Otherwise, news. Well, good, a little bit, but still swing. Yeah, that's the most important stuff. Um, I think you replied to my email, right, Scars? So I need to check that out. Uh, so yeah, this is like a very fast very quick kind of way of, you just look at something and you paint it. Uh, now let me know if you have any uh, questions. I'm thinking if I want to darken some stuff here. You see, now I'm now I'm into it. Now I'm like, oh, I want to improve it. Uh, so let me know. It's your opportunity right now, everyone, to ask uh, any questions, uh, any technique you want me to show. Um, I'd be happy to demonstrate. So I'll add just a few more details like this with uh, just linear kind of fashion. Well, let's indicate that this has some uh, thickness to it. Kind of lost that wet and wet effect. This definitely requires some indication. And soon I'll be able to open the window again. We'll have some natural light, hopefully, that isn't terrible. Uh, like that. And I totally forgot about that other side there, the cap. Uh, but yeah. So just fun, loose, lighthearted. You can paint anything this way. I painted it super short, by the way. It should go maybe up, down to here. Uh, one more thing I've been toying around with is the idea of painting without any um, any pencil lines at all. So just you know to, to go for it, which could be a fun fun thing to try too. Uh, so let me know if you want me to try and do that kind of a thing. Um, da -da -da. 
Uh, and Jay Morgan says, thanks for the great video. As a beginner, you're a great teacher. Thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, there's a video I want you to check out if you missed it, because a lot of people missed it. It's the one with the blue car that I did wet and wet. This really shows the wet and wet technique. I think it's a good video. Uh, very underrated. The painting, too. I think it's a milestone for me. So uh, check it out. Hey, Lola NP, how are you? Hi, Leron. I think I'm the only person who doesn't like core water core. Oh, well. Well, I'll, I hope to report in the future if I'm uh, like you or not. Um, Avria, hello. Also glad I could finally catch a live stream. I'm just playing, drawing along. Cool, cool. That's the best. Um, Megan Kelly, hello, Liron, and everyone. I was just working on the frustration free watercolor course when I saw you're alive. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, let me know how it goes. It's always, it's crazy because I, I get feedback very often and people write to me, but it's, it's, it's so different than being there and actually teaching, uh, in person. And it's, Everything you'll tell me about it and how it goes and what you learn and what maybe could be improved is super valuable to me because um, maybe I'll show you the bottle. Uh, because, yeah, I, I it's very hard to tell how people find any you know, anything I make, basically, um, without them telling me to my face. <laughs> Let me show you just the reference. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. Maybe I'll just show you here. Talk to them. See? I think that looks kind of similar, uh, but yeah. So uh, it's super. It's always amazing to hear someone going through the course. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's a reminder. Like real people go through it and and learn from it. It's crazy. It's so easy to get detached from it. Um, so so I'm very happy that you anchor me back in. This is why I like re replying to messages, which I am also a little behind on uh, on Instagram and other places. Uh, Vespa says, hi, your pelt is so messy, it always produces fabulous paintings. Yeah, so this today's mess is actually from the portrait uh, that I showed you earlier. So the colors are kind of matching. I use the green of their uniform here. Uh, this kind of emeraldy green. It's always messy. You just overpower it with whatever you, you want, and it tends to work well. Um, so yeah. Uh, NJ Morgan, transparent looks uh, in glass effect. Oh, yeah, that could be interesting. Um, I don't know if it's like a technique or something I could wing, but a lot of it actually comes from um, the contrast, like light versus dark. Actually, let me just grab a glass from the kitchen. Maybe I can, we'll see, maybe I can wing it. Just one second. Yeah, so thank you for your patience. Now, the one thing it will depend on is actually the light and shadow here in my room. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of mediocre. I don't know if I'll be able to produce something great. Let me just look for a picture online. Glass. And I'll try to kind of demo. And I, I didn't set this up correctly again. So um, I can't really bring in photos. But so, for example, one of the things that I noticed, let's do glass still life. Let's see what we can find. In worst case, I can share a link to the photo in the description box and you can take a look. Oh, yeah, that's nice, actually. Mm, let's see here. But I want a photo, not a painting that's already made, yeah. Is this a painting? No, good. So a lot of the beauty in these will actually come from the contrast of the light and dark. That's the, the key thing that leads it. Um, so... So we get a lot of, let me try and paint this. This is crazy. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I can try. Um, I'm going to drop a link in the description box. But that's, that's a painting. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I just didn't set it up correctly. So I guess I'll just talk a bit about the concept. Uh, so here's where, uh, the way I see it. When it comes to uh, these kinds of effects of a glass and, and transparency, the one thing you want to pay attention to is those contrasts. So, for example, you'll have something like a bottle. So, something like this. And I know maybe you can't see too well, but I'll show you in just a second. Or maybe even I'll just use the glass in front of me. I don't even need a different reference. Where did my trusty eraser go, though? There it is. So, I'll just use my own glass for this. Let's see. So... Top should be much more open. See, my ovals uh, could use a lot of improvement too. So that's the top. 
and then it goes down like that. It's at a bit of an angle, but not too serious. So that'll be the bottom. And then a bit bigger, actually. And then I connect the two here. And that's kind of the shape. Um, and then we have this maybe lower. We just have to draw it for a second to get in the gist of it. OK. And then around here, we have a change of pattern in the glass that goes. And this is like a, the most common type of, of glass. It goes kind of like this. I see these everywhere. So I'm, I assume most people are familiar with them. So it goes something like that. Now the glass has some thickness to it. So you have an inner oval and an outer oval. Now the main thing that, that is important is as everything to look at things as abstract shapes. Okay, and I want to show you real quick. Uh, it's actually not as important for you to see the entire process, but just as a quick kind of um, kind of a thing. So you see here this, right? So the key is actually in the um, in the contrasts of the light and dark. So let me switch over here and make sure you can see. Yeah, set up some me, so that's my bad. Um, but basically, there are just it's all grays, so I'm just going to use whatever I have on the palette, and then I'll follow the pattern I see. So one thing I see is just at the top is just it has a color, so I'll go over it like this. So it's something like that, right? And then from here it starts to be a little interesting because. You have this side, and I'm starting super light on purpose and very thin, too. I usually don't use this brush like that, but I think it'll be fun. And you just follow the pattern of light and shadow. Whether it makes sense to you or not, that's the key here. So like I see all, all of these different shapes, and then I see this skewed shape from behind running down like that. That's just what I see, so I recreate it. And then I see another one of these here. I see a bit of it here, kind of like this. And then there's a reflection of my sharpener that is blue. So you get a fairly dark line that goes down like this, down to the bottom. Now here's where it gets interesting. Here you start to deal with reflections of this cutting mat surface that, un that is under. Uh, not reflections, but you can actually see the thing. So inside it, I see all of these very abstract shapes like, that go like this. And then it goes up again like that. And if you can recreate these shapes and skew them in the right direction, you'll kind of get the effect of the glass. And it's very confusing. That's the thing. It's sometimes very hard to detach from what you think is there. And I see a bunch of these lines, and they, they kind of skew with the shape of the glass like this. See how it slowly kind of starts to be built? And then there's a ton of thin lines here because it's close to where it goes rounded. Uh, and then you see all of these different shapes there. Um, again, a bit of this here, a bit of this there. Um, and then, and you'll see in just a moment, I'm going to do something fun and then it will pop. Uh, but there's a lot of this kind of a weird skewing going on. And I'll, I'll liken it to a different effect in just one second. And I think it will make sense to a lot of people. Now, we need to actually draw the glass. So how do we draw the glass? And I'm tempted to, let me zoom in a bit more. I just want to make sure that you'll be able to see it. There we go. So maybe a little bit better. Good, sorry for my not so good setup. But it's starting to come together. Now, the one thing that is missing actually here, and it's funny, is the white of the glass, because we need to paint everything that isn't the glass. So the background's a little yellow. It's a little yellowy. The wall is a bit yellow. There's light from the outside. So I'm mixing a very light, pale yellow uh, wash, and I'm just going to apply it. I'll see what I can do here. And then here's the key. You need to leave some highlights for the actual glass. That's the funny part. So I'm going to just fill it in and leave a few white highlights. And I'm doing this a bit sloppy, so you'll have to forgive me. But And in just a moment, you'll see how it connects. So a few highlights here and there. 
like this. And if you miss anything, you can come back with like a gel pen or you know, white opaque paint. But then the way to actually show the glass, and don't worry, I'll, I'll add some more things to improve it. But you need to indicate where the glass is. And the glass is transparent, as, as you said. So the way to achieve this is to paint the surroundings that aren't transparent. Something like this, you see? So there's the table under the glass. It's a little more green, admittedly. Something like that. It reaches about here. And you see how it starts to develop a glassy look? Very sloppy, I know, but just to, sh to explain the concept behind it. And then if I'll add, um, there's actually a nice reflection on the wall, so I'll, I'll try and get that. But it should be wet and wet, so let me pre-wet this. So if this is the wall, then I'll kind of dump in the reflection. It's very fun for me to sometimes paint like this. It's very loose uh, and probably gets a lot of things wrong, but it's just fun. There's this kind of reflection on the wall here. Um, and then these should be a little darker now that I added the inside, that yellow. That yellow wasn't the smartest choice. But you see how this, especially here, starts to look like glass? And then you can start adding some more nuances. Like I see these here, very thin stripes. Not sure what their origin is or what they reflect, but it all, it all has to do with the direction of the glass and the pattern on it because this it has this pattern, you see? So basically highlights, uh, darker areas, darker reflections on the sides, broken effect here caused by the different direction of the these things. So the one thing you want to pay attention to is all of these different shapes. It's not the easiest thing to do. And I would actually, if I would redo it, I'll, I'll have gotten rid of all of these. I don't need I don't need this darker section. But yeah, hopefully that just goes a bit in the direction of glass. I can do a more dedicated tutorial. These require, even on your end, if you're going to paint something like this, it requires a bit of preparation and a very accurate drawing, I feel like, to get all of these nuances. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Super random and not easy to, to do. Uh, I can try for another one if you want me to. Uh, uh, White Reza, I have a chessboard in front of me, six different pieces. I guess I now have a daily challenge for the week. Cool. Yeah. Masterpieces. I don't think you talk about the glass, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Baby says, I'll watch all your videos to learn. You are the best at explaining. Thank you so much. Um, the one thing I will say is very important is to explore on your own. So watch my videos. I'm super grateful for that. I think they're great for the techniques and understanding. But beyond that, you really have to dedicate yourself to the process of just discovering things on your own. So just saying. Uh, Liron, how do you achieve that wet, rainy look on a road surface? And also how to achieve an object such as a... Uh, rock underwater. So let's talk about the second one. Rock underwater will actually depend greatly on the weather conditions. So sometimes you have clear water where you see the small rounded stones that are beautiful. I don't know what you call these. Uh, I actually knew, but I forgot. Let me check. Pebbles, maybe? We have a strange word for them in Hebrew. Uh, let me see here. I think it's pebbles. But let me confirm. Yeah, pebbles. Okay, so you see the pebbles underneath if it's a river, shallow river. That will vary again depending on the depth of water, the weather conditions, and so on. But the key thing to remember is the exact same as this. You have to disconnect from what you think is there, what you think um, the shapes look like, and draw them as you see them. That's the main thing. There was an artist that did a spectacular job at it, and I'm not sure if I can find them. Um, I forgot their name, but like beautiful beaches with blue wet and wet touches for the stones. Um, now, to give you a more practical answer, it's a combination of two things, John. One is that is disconnecting from what is actually there, because if you try drawing pebbles and water above them, it's impossible. You have to see things as they are. And, and you know, water very often seems different it's very you know it's it's always moving and always changing and it reacts to the shapes and reflects the environment and the if it's some parts of it can be blue and some parts green and brown and and all sorts of interesting colors so one thing is to detach 
from what is actually there and look at it the way you see it as abstract shapes. It can help turn the photo black and white. It can help uh, to posterize it. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing I will say is technique. And it's very heavily reliant on technique because with water, you have to be able to do wet and wet correctly if you're going to portray a scene where there's a lot of blurry shapes in. So I would say you have to work on the technique individually and you also have to learn how to detach from what you think is there and see it as it actually is, which is the hardest thing to do probably for many people. <laughs> Myself included, it's very hard. Um, Sunflower, can you draw 3D items? Yes, definitely. Let me know if you have something specific in mind because um, it's just something that I do often in... Um, and I don't know, like, I don't know if I'll need to add something to it. But I, what I can say about this is a fun exercise that I recently discovered is actually to place things. So, for example, I have the bottle here. So I can place like a, um, a cube next to it or maybe an assortment of random shapes. Let's even get a triangle going there in the middle. Let's make it a pyramid. Yeah, let's do a pyramid. So something like this. And then I'll challenge myself to paint these shapes uh, in two values. So uh, white, paper white, and dark. And then you can start playing around with, OK, so let's say light comes from, where do we want it to come from? Let's do this. So this side of the bottle will be in shadow, something like that, OK? And then this part will be in shadow. This will probably also be in shadow by the um, by the bottle. This will be in shadow. And then they'll also cast a shadow, so something like that. And then it's just fun to see if you can get everything done with just maybe, again, two values. So I'll mix everything together. And this is a great way of using up your excess paint, making sure you don't throw away too much. Um, let me get some of this cool blue, too. And then you just go for it. So. The inside is in shadow, and then this side of the bottle is in shadow, right? Like we did here, the, the previous one taught us about it. But here's what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to connect these shapes of shadow. So you'll see when we get to the other shapes, of course, but here you go, shadow. And then let's blend this because it's a rounded shape. So the transition is going to be gradual, see, like this. Same here. And then continue with this wash down to the cube. Get the cast shadow in. Get the shadowy side of the cube in. Get the cube's cast shadow in. And then we don't have too much of a shadow to connect here, so we'll do the triangle separately. And then what you do is basically you check if you're able to create a sense of three-dimensionality. Um, for example, if we'd have another... Um, cube here facing towards us, that'll actually be beneficial because look what happens here. Oh, I'm just putting in random details. We have this beautiful, so this cube is facing towards us. Now you get a negative space bringing out that lightest part here, right? So I like to sometimes do that. I'll just put a random assortment of shapes. Maybe let's make it wider. Um, I don't even know what I'm drawing here, but that's fine. Um, I like to sometimes just draw a random assortment of shapes and see if I can make them look three-dimensional. Um, let's try. Do I care that it hasn't dried yet? No, I don't. <laughs> let's try it again. Uh, let me let me see if I can find a good still life structure. Still life, um, still life, three D uh, shapes. Let's see if I can find something good, and then tell me if you have any questions about that. I just I'm looking for an interesting composition that will show things front and back. Yeah, this is good. Okay, so I'll just draw it really quick. The reference photo isn't, honestly, isn't that interesting. But you have a cube here. On top of that cube, you have a cylinder. And hopefully you can see everything because I kind of lost track of. Okay, yeah. I know it's super light, don't worry. It will get dark in a second. So you have this, let me just go dark immediately. You have a cylinder on top of a cube. It goes down like this. Now, I, I always recommend to start light. I just want you to be able to see. Uh, so I'll try and work smarter. There's a ball here. There's a cone there that actually goes like this. And then there's another box here, approximately. 
And what I like about this still life arrangement that you can see is that they actually did a dark background here. So what this does, let me show you. Hopefully uh, you can see, I'll, I'll just confirm. Yeah, you can see pretty much everything. So what I like to do here, the, the, what I'm looking at is a sketch of this in three dimensions. But what I want to show you is a painting. So here's this shadow. The light comes from this direction. So this casts a light to the left here. This is in the shadow. This is also where the light turns to shadow. And it casts a light here. And this ball casts a light here. I'm doing it real rough, but I just want you to get an understanding of the technique I was talking about. And then what you do is you treat it again as two values. So basically light and dark. Let's do a bit of purple and yellow. It'll be a faster mixing. Wait a second, I have a phone call. Just a second. Oh, OK. נכון, אני פשוט בפגישה, אתם יכולים לשים לי את זה בתיבה? זה נכנס? זה ייכנס בתיבה? כן, דירה ארבע. מעולה, תודה רבה. אוקיי, אז אני קיבלתי את הניטרל טינט, דליברד לי מיילבוק, אז זה טוב. אז פה אנחנו נכנסים. אני קצת מלחץ, כי אני חושב שאני לא אגיד את זה, ואני לא אגיד את זה. So yeah, just mixing a bit. Well, I actually need more, so let me see here. And then we'll do a break. I'll go over some of your uh, comments and we'll see where we're headed. Let's add a bit of this blue. I'll keep it light though. Just there's not too much space. I don't want to zoom out too much. So sorry that everything is kind of crammed together. What? Sorry about that. What? Bye. Bye. Good. Uh, so I'm just going to paint it starting from the background. And I, what I want you to focus on is just one, one value for everything. So look at how beautiful this negative space is going to be. And that's an exercise I like doing, actually. I'll usually do it smaller. This is huge, but just to. Uh, just to demonstrate the point, I'll go here and connect. See this connection? Connect this. Everything that's a shadow is essentially connected. So this connects here. And that doesn't mean that I won't blend, blend an edge. If you can, if you have enough uh, experience and willingness, do that in the same go. And then continue. Connect all shadows. And I'm going a little fast to make sure that things don't dry. You see how the surface, this is a good opportunity. So the Buckingford surface, it's not perfect. It's, it's a good paper. But you see how the paint kind of stays on the surface and then it starts drying a bit unevenly. That actually reminds me of a lot of, um, uh, a lot of hot press papers that I used in the past. So um, I don't know if it's meant to be like that, but yeah. It's not, a, it's not a terrible deal breaker or anything like that. It's actually still a nice paper, um, especially for these kinds of exercises. But hopefully you see how this kind of a thing, if you do it smaller so that it's not as intense, uh, it's actually quite fun. Uh, and, and it can help you understand how to merge shapes together. It can teach you a lot about negative and positive spaces. And then I have a cool exercise with ovals to show you. Um, and don't be afraid to come back with some water and really help help the paint move, you see? You got to help it move sometimes and then connect them. This is not that deep in the shadow, actually, but let me do it because it looks like it should be. And then this goes here, and this is in the shadow, and all the rest is not. And you see, it's just a fun kind of thing. And then you ask yourself, does it look good? Does Am I able to convey the three-dimensional uh, character of the scene. And if you can read this as three-dimensional objects, then uh, I succeeded. Now, what you can do is come back with a bit of uh, paint and just bring out some points that should be darker. So for example, maybe the cast shadow here could be a little darker. Maybe here, especially near the center, could be a little darker. 
uh, here as well. Here, maybe there's some reflected shadow from the cone. The shadow cast by the cone here near the middle, maybe a little darker, you see. And then you can bring out some details if you want to bring out some more. But that's a, a fun little exercise that I will uh, occasionally do. So yeah, just bring out the... And of course, I can... Uh, now, if I want to, I can paint all of the surface, the ground, if you will, and it will bring out the highlights. So let's do that just for fun. And if, if it's a mistake, it's a mistake. Because I do want to show you how the light values can pop a bit. Uh, even just by adding a very pale wash to the surface itself, right? And if you have one takeaway from this and everything we did so far today, it's just learn to have fun with the paint, learn to not judge yourself, learn to enjoy it. Um, that's the only way really to grow, I think. Uh, if you suffer and you think too hard and you really try to have every shape be perfect, you just, it will be very hard to stay... Um, stay consistent and practice consistently. So just do these fun exercises, you know. If you can squint your eyes and see it, that, that's really cool and, and I'm happy with it, you know. Um, but that's really it. You don't, you don't need anything to be perfect, right? You can decide that the side planes are also a little darker. You can do whatever you want, really. Um, but yeah, just a fun little thing to do here. And then you can start changing things around and thinking, okay, will this look better if I if I move the box a little inside it? And then you will see more of the shape behind it or less of the shape behind it. It's just a fun uh, thing to try. So I hope it makes sense. I know it's a bit messy and all over the place, but uh, it's important to have fun. So uh, that was a long answer. Uh, Liron, I meant to add uh, with a wet, rainy road, how to portray the card's reflection. Yeah, I, I forgot the second part of your question, right. So I'm not an expert in wet roads, to be honest with you. I have very few paintings that actually show a wet road. Uh, I don't feel like the authority, but I do have feel like the Joseph Bukovic's video is great on that, the one on coloring your life. I watched that thing like five times, <laughs> 10 times maybe. Watch it again and, and figure out how he does it because a lot of the feeling of wet wetness comes from wet and wet, but you need to know where to use it and how to use it strategically. Because you can do everything wet and wet. Some things, sorry, you need to be in focus. And that's the thing. Um, you can't really do everything wet and wet. You can, you, know, you can do whatever you want, but um, I think a more practical way could be, could you send me uh, via email would be best. Send me a few paintings and ask me specifically, like, how is this done? Okay, And I'll be happy to maybe dive deeper on it. Um, but I do love Joseph's book, which is a uh, demo. I think that it really shows it. Of course, there's also the issue of colors and, val and, and not values. Well, also values. Colors are important too sometimes because that gray has a winter feel. Even this has like a gray winter feel to it um, <clears throat> as opposed to a strong sunlight so there's that there is the vo the values so rainy days things like that they tend to be darker overall so a mid value tends to serve you really well when painting that kind of a thing uh, and this means that sometimes things will even dark values become mid value because the air has rain in it so it lightens things up actually so it's counterintuitive but a rainy day kind of turns everything gray. Contrasts become lower. It's overcast. Things that are light become dark, yes. But things that are dark also go back into the mid-value section. You see? So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's not an easy thing to learn. So it's not an easy thing to explain as well. Uh, and I'm not a master of it. Uh, Melodia Singer says, hello, master. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you're so fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm getting a lot of compliments today. Really appreciate it. Pence Palacio, I'm actually playing your stream while scanning through my notes. Fortunately, I can still focus on both. I can lower the, the quality of talk to just noises, and then then you would be able to maybe even better concentrate. Uh, John says, thank you. I, I hope I could help. I know it's not the easiest topic to, to understand. Monica, good morning from... Uh, good morning, Leron. Currently in Florida. Cool. Um, Hope you're doing well. Is it vacation? Hope you're enjoying yourself. Uh, Megan says, Doggo, oh, yeah. Uh, Melodia, oh, here. Yeah, okay. So now I'm catching up to all the comments about the dog. Uh, uh, Richard says, how's your knee recovery getting all your own? Actually, really well. Um, so 
I don't think I'm longer in recovery stage. I'm now strengthening it. And sometimes I share in the stories from the, uh, from the workout sessions uh, with my trainer, Lee. She's really good. She knows exactly how to tackle the issue from different directions. So to really learn how to use the knee for things that were very challenging for me. So for example, one-legged squats, like pistol squats or one-legged squats is something I will... I, I tried doing it, then we very fast we realized it's not going to happen. So we went on this route of working on really strengthening the knee in different ways. So I am doing um, pistol squats, but as you may, some of you may have seen with rings, so I'm holding on to something. Also doing a lot of just general squat exercises. Um, physiotherapy, I'm going strong. I'm doing a lot of lateral movement. I find that that's really important, the IT bend. Um, and the feeling that I had before of like a wooden leg or kind of, um, especially when waking up that, that got much better. It's barely there. It's just physiotherapy, to be honest with you. That was the, the key. Uh, Melodia says, no hablo inglés, pero so entiende todo. Oh, cool. So you understand everything. I understand most of what I read in Spanish, even though I don't speak Spanish. So that's cool. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, uh, this video is so helpful. Stop painting. Nothing I do works out. Not sure why. Yeah, so keep it simple. You know, very often I see people that, that struggle with a painting and it's a hard painting, like something like a portrait. And I see someone saying, I really struggle with this. It's the hardest scene ever and there's tons of details. But the day I see someone telling me they struggle with this, I'll be happy. Because then I know you're at least working on something that is very basic. Because I work on things that are basic. Right now, six, seven years in. So, and you may be more experienced than me, of course, but... Just saying that <clears throat> if you're having a hard time with one thing, take it take it back a notch. Try something simpler like this. It could be really fun to add some outline to the shapes. Let's do that. Maybe with, with paint too. I don't know why. I look at it and I'm like, oh, it could be cool to add some lines. And I know I there are no lines in real life. I always say that. But sometimes it's fun to draw them. So let me do this. Something fun that I barely do or show or, you know, let me use a smaller brush for this. Just looked at it and I'm like, oh, a few lines in strategic places could make this look really cool. So I'll go with it. So I'll mix a bit of a thing here. Some blue, some red, some yellow, and we're good to go. So let me get a few lines in, in places where I feel like they could be the most effective. So maybe here and maybe here. Make that distinction, show where the shape is. Like this. That'll be a fun line to draw. This, you see, because the contrast is strong, so strong here, you don't need a line. That's kind of the thing that guides me. So maybe I'll do a line here. See? Something like that. Here I won't draw a line because I don't need one. Again, the contrast is so strong. Um, so, yeah. And you see that kind of tightens it up a bit. It actually looks much better in real life. I think once it'll dry, it'll look um, better on camera too. But you see, that's just a fun thing that I thought to myself, let's try and do. Um, usually in places that have strong light, I don't want to close it off because that will really make it look rigid. Uh, so I'll keep this, like I'll never go over this line probably or this line. When you leave it like that, it feels more like an organic sense of light, right? But maybe here I will put a line. In the shadows overall, I will put more lines. You see, it just looks cool. Let me show it to you on the front camera because it looks much better, of course. Uh, here we go. So a bit of a cleaner look, what this looks like. You see, what is that? That's super random, but I like it. You know, I like that. Um, so yeah, go go one level um, earlier and, and try there and then continue. Take it slow. Watercolor is like a, an entire huge world, you know? Uh, I looked away for a second and looked back and suddenly there's a still life painting. Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's just that. It's, things connect very fast. You just follow the process. Uh, baby, I only have one brush and that's the one with water inside. Okay, yeah. So you have something like... Uh, I don't even have one handy here because I don't like them as much. So my problem with them is the water capacity usually isn't great. Um, but if you just use it as a normal brush, it can work really well. Um, I wouldn't trust the water well inside it. But other than that, that's it could work. I actually started with that kind of a brush. And I tried drawing on Arsh uh, rough paper, and I couldn't get a line even because I wasn't using enough water. 
and the papers texture wasn't allowing anything to happen. So it was so fun. I was like, I can't even paint. Like I can't even make a shape. Uh, so that was, it was funny. Uh, Maraki Irenic says, have you had moments where you destroy your painting in frustration because it looks nothing like you initially wanted it to? Very, very few. And usually I was frustrated about something else and I tried to paint the frustration away. Um, but it's very rare. I have everything here. I, I don't rip almost anything. Definitely not in frustration. It's more like I really dislike this crappy thing I did. I'm going to use it as test paper. Or I'm going to use the backside, right? But very rare. I don't think it maybe happened once. Once or twice. But maybe it means that I'm not trying hard enough. Who knows? Now, Pence Palacio, I'm having a hard time with values. Any tips that you can share? Yeah. Um, two things, uh, observation and technique. So to talk about... Um, Technique first, uh, the one thing, and I will talk about this in the upcoming realism course, by the way, but look at how nicely this glass uh, came together, this part especially. It looks like glass that changes its direction. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, one thing I always recommend is the value scale. Now, I mean this in a few important ways. I do want you to, of course, develop a better control over the technique. So I want you to be able to do this. I want you to be able to start with just water, let's say. So kind of like this, very, very, not just water, but like very transparent wash. And then develop the ability to gradually add more darker and darker values to it. Something like this. And then you'll go for something that is yet again darker. And use black and white, it's easier at first, but then you can graduate to uh, different colors. And you take it all the way till it is, let's say, pitch black. Okay? It's a bit hard to see the distinction, but there is one between these two. And you'll see it once it dries. Okay? Now, I also want you to develop the ability to do it the other way around. So start dark and gradually bring in more water and be able to lighten whatever it is you're uh, painting. So value scales to me are very important. So remember what I said, I'm going to divide it into two. First part is technique. And lastly, we'll do something that is very, really pale. So I want you to learn both ways. So that is technique. Now, I want you to become a master of it. What I mean is you can do this very easily. You can also do this. So you have a value. It's not dark enough. You go ahead and darken it, wet and wet if you need to. You learn how to do that on the spot. And then you learn how to, oh, it's too dark. So you come back with some water and you lighten it up. You see? I want you to be able to do it from all different angles. So that is technique. Now, second comes observation observation. And what I would do in this case is, like I showed you in the color matching exercise, I want you to do value matching. You take this squiggle, you put it somewhere, and you try and recreate the value. And what's important is to isolate it. So you can see it for what it truly is, as clean as possible, right? So this isn't too dark. This gets a little darker, right? It looks fairly light, but it actually goes quite a lot darker. Um, for the bottle that I did earlier, let's do this. I don't want to mess it up too much, the, uh, the other side of the paper. But this goes a little darker. This goes a little darker, right? So you go over, you do this for an hour. You just match every value you see. The same way, the same technique I just showed you. You put it. It's not accurate. You darken it. You, you remove. If it's too lost and it's too dry, you just do another one, another squiggle. You do a lot of that. Now. A big, a big challenge in values, and I know what you, where you're getting at, is yes, Iran, I can match the value I see, but what happens when I look at a scene or a, a portrait or whatever it is, and I'm really trying to, to get the overall pattern of value, right? Like, it's very hard for it to all to come together. So one thing that I will say is very important is the concept of core shadows, and I barely talk about it, but I think it is very important. So if you look at this portrait, for example, 
the first thing I wanted to figure out was not how light is it this area, how dark is this. Sometimes I'll paint like that, but for this one, because it's very complex, I wanted to figure out where the core shadow is. So it's just the area that is fully in the shadow. So this here, follow my line here, going to the eyebrow, back here, around the eye, around back, and not even including this area, but actually cutting back here and going behind the nose to this entire left bottom part of the face. So my core shadow here, if I have to draw it, let me try and draw it for you, is follow the shape, okay? It goes from here, down here, around the eyebrow and the eye, okay? I'm not looking at the proportions. I'm not trying to be super accurate here. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the core shadow looks like. Down the nose and then down the bottom of the nose and even going around and connecting to this thing here and the lip. Upper lip is mainly in the shadow and then you have this kind of part of the lip in the shadow and then you'll have under the lip and the chin. See? Now, what's the idea? And then that's the rest of the face. So what's the idea behind a core shadow? Core shadows is where light just stops reaching the reference photo. It's tricky because sometimes there are a few light sources, okay? But generally speaking, if you have to draw a line where light stops reaching, is it here, is it there? Look at the forehead. The forehead is round. So if light comes from the side, it'll get up to the middle of the forehead. So beyond this middle of the forehead, or here it's a bit skewed to the left, that's where light stops reaching. And everything in that area will be darker. Now, it's not going to be perfectly black because some light does reach these areas. What light reaches these areas? Reflected light, other light sources, because we're looking at just the light sources comes here from the right, okay? Light comes from the right here, and it creates this pattern of light and shadow. So this is our main, what we call core shadow, and everything is subservient to that. And you already simplified the process of seeing values and painting them accurately. Because all you really care about is having a very clear distinction between this area and the other areas. The rest is subservient to that. So what do I mean by that? For example, this eye is going to be much darker. Of course, the eyes are pretty inside the eye socket, so they're dark, right? And then this eyebrow is a little darker too, right? But notice what happens here. I'm not going to lift. I'm not going to erase anything from this core shadow. That's, that's going to stay the same. The other eye on the other side, same thing. It's very dark. The eyebrow too is quite dark. Something like that. Okay, I'm not super accurate, but that's fine. Goes down a little more and around it. The shadow under the nose is much darker. And the, within the nostrils, it's super dark. And here it's super dark. Top lip is really, really dark. But we're still working within the constraints of that core shadow. You see, uh, this area tends to be very dark and also under the chin. And under here, it's really, really dark. Okay, so we get this pattern right here. It's also very dark. And then... Everything that's in the lit areas is lighter than the core shadow, no matter what. So, for example, this side of the nose is also darker, but it's not as dark. And this is also part of the core shadow, by the way. It's not as dark as the core shadow. Okay, the core shadow is darker. That's darker than this. This is just a very light shape. This here is very light. This here is light. See, it is a shadow, but it's a very light shadow. This is a shadow, but it's very light. So the idea is just like I've shown you here. Can you simplify? And you see it's mirrored the other side. So I knew this will happen, but that's fine. Can you simplify the entire thing you're painting into two values that are very easy for you to tackle? Where is the core shadow? So for example, where is the core shadow here on this cylinder? It's right here. This is the core shadow. You may have reflected light here. So you may find that this section is dark. And this is a little lighter. That's a very common occurrence. Core shadow here is here. This is the core shadow on the cube where light can no longer reach. This is the core shadow on this cube. Core shadow on this cube. This is a cast shadow. This is no longer a core shadow. This is a different uh, story. Nose is a cast to cast shadow. But um, 
shadows on the object, shadows uh, that are cast by the objects are, aren't considered really core shadow, depending on the context and how you, that's just, um, that's just jargon. It's not as important to me. What's important to me is for you to understand that no one can really tackle everything at once. You know, of course you can if you go a la prima and you really try and get every value right, but you will get some unevenness. You will get some places where the paint didn't flow as well as you wanted it to. So what you do instead is you really look at a reference and analyze it. Where is the core shadow? And all of the other shadows and lights are subservient to the core shadow. If you get the core shadow right, it will look good. Will it look perfect? No. Will it look exactly like the thing you painted? No. But it will look good. And that's the key here because it will be correct. So that's my long um, long answer. Now, I do see you added. I'm like retouching every single layer because it's so uneven. So what you're talking about here, unevenness is a different story. Um, or maybe you don't get the right value and you won't need to patch it up. So if you do need to patch it up, a lot of it has to do with painting fast enough, with um, having the paper at an angle, using enough water to get flow. There's a lot that goes into that. It could also be your paper. And so maybe switch to a better paper. You saw here, it was a lot of it is uneven. And here's the irony, you know? So yes, look at all the unevenness in the background. But does it really, do you even care about it? And I was really sloppy with it. I could have been a little more careful, got it even more, even smoothly. Like here, you see it's a bit smoother on the other side here. I think I dipped my paper into a well of paint, which is never a good thing, <laughs> into the red. Uh, so I have to be a little careful. Uh, but in any case, this is a little smoother, right? This isn't as smooth. But still, you don't care. You know why? This still looks really cool to me. Because the core shadows are correct. So even the unevenness in the core shadows, it doesn't matter as much. Um, so it's all about focusing on the main thing. And then tackling the smaller problems within it. That takes some thought, takes some planning, takes some analysis. Not easy. And it comes with experience. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, it was a rather long answer. Ambi says, knee pain is so terrible. I hope it will be fine soon. I have a knee replacement. It was a long way, but now I'm happy with it. Yeah, so I'm happy that now you're happy with it. it it's rough, yeah. I actually dislocated, um, I dislocated my right knee twice when I was young. Um, the knee that is problematic is actually the left one, so it's funny. It's not so much a pain in the knee. It's more of a feeling of, again, like a, like a wooden leg kind of a thing. And the pain, if anything, is on the left, the lateral side, the outside. So it's not really the center of the knee, which I know can be really terrible. It's more like the outside. That's why I had to work laterally in the IT band. Um, so yeah. Sticky Art says, hello, hello, welcome aboard. Um, Kate L, which travel brushes are you using? Uh, the same ones. I'll, I'll just pack the same brushes I'm using here. I like the Skoda ones for travel. They are collapsible, so you can do this. Collapse and collapse but honestly i don't like doing that because i'm always scared of raining the bristles but yeah you see it's super small but if i paint plein air the rare occasions i do um i take a backpack so i have enough room for the brushes as they are i have this sleeve that rolls up on them um, so i'm using the same ones actually uh pen says can we see Liron painting wildlife uh yeah i actually have a few but i'll, I'll try doing more that could be fun uh, Tom, uh, how are you? Hey, all happy streaming, watching. Can not stick around for this one. Uh, his work is kicking my ass this week on the Birdtober backlog. Enjoy. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's so cool for everyone who share uh, their paintings on the Birdtober hashtag and on, on the uh, Discord. That's really cool. We're going to have a Pokemon flying Pokemon uh, painting challenge this Saturday if anyone wants to join in. Um, so, yeah. Melodia says... Then I like a video for favor. So are you asking people to like the video? If you do, then thank you so much. You can drop a like and it helps it reach more people. Thank you so much. I'm going to actually refresh and check and see how many people liked it. If not a lot of people liked it, I'm going to be furious. No, I'm kidding. Okay, yeah, so 65 people. That's decent. I have two dislikes, which is fun. Uh, if you can, take a moment to like the video. It helps me reach more people. That is always greatly appreciated. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the first says really helpful scales, core shadows. Yeah, it really is important. Uh, Wendy says, thanks for instructional video. You got it. Uh, White Reza, to get an even layer, I often find it easier to put a first wash of clean water. Any comment on the difference with just putting paint? Um, yeah, so here's the thing. 
yes, if you do it wet and wet, what's called if you pre-wet the paper, it could help. Um, I'm a big fan of knowing how to do both ways. So I don't want to rely just on pre-wetting because pre-wetting comes with a lot of possible complications with it. So I would ideally prefer to be able to both, uh, both work directly wet on dry, but also do wet and wet. Um, the one thing I like about wet on dry is that you can get a dark value very fast and you don't have to battle the wetness on paper. Uh, but definitely, I get your point and I agree. When you pre-wet, very often you'll get a more even uh, result. One thing is if your paper isn't really good, it may dry unevenly. And then you essentially didn't really improve the situation. So just something to have in mind. Uh, Monica uh, says, I also have trouble with values. Thank you for explaining. Very happy I could help. Uh, Lay Poplar says, hi, and, and Waves. Thank you so much for being here. I love names like that, that, that have a GH and that isn't pronounced. I think it's a really cool pattern. I love languages. I'm a nerd, so I like that kind of a thing. TS says, how to know uh, that he will be streaming? I mean, from Indonesia, uh, anyone uh, from the same country as me. So TS, uh, here's the thing. I stream almost like 99% of Thursdays at the same time. So if you join next week, um, the stream started an hour and a half ago. So whatever that translates to Indonesia, and I can check it for you. Let's see. Time Indonesia now. So it is now, and I, I don't know if it's the, the entire country. I see there are a few time zones. Um, but Bali, for example, now it's 1030. So, uh, so it's about, we're six hours maybe behind. So maybe around like 9 p.m., something around that time, 9 p.m. Indonesia time every Thursday. I stream. I don't know if it's Wednesday or Thursday now, but whatever it is. So the same time next week, I'll be on in short. <laughs> uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, baby, how are you inspired on painting? I, I honestly don't know. I don't do much to be inspired. I just follow the desire that's already existing. Um, seeing other people's work really gets me fired up and makes me want to learn to be as good or like learning the same techniques or the same way of controlling the paint. Um, I think it is also about maybe understanding what types of scenes you enjoy looking at. So um, for me, I really enjoy cars. So that will be something that inspires me. Um, you have to really discover for yourself. That's the thing. That's why there aren't really any answers that are set in stone, you know. Uh, I know it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but hopefully it helps. Uh, Amina says it's really tough to handle watercolors for professional paintings. Yeah, for everything. <laughs> Watercolor is a challenge. You need to learn. Uh, quite a bit. But a lot of it, you know, I don't want to instill in anyone the belief that it's it's hard to, to learn it because you can learn it very fast and some people do learn it very fast. Um, as long as you understand a very basic interaction of water and paint and you just spend hours filling in the paper with random scribbles, go dark, go light, try and blend an edge, you will get it fast. You know, it's just a matter of doing it more and more and more and more and more. Uh, so it's not that hard. You can, I think you can, I will dare to say you can learn a lot of the techniques in a month max and you're good. Um, so yeah. And look at, for example, Niels Danielson, who was here uh, for an interview. He's painting for two and a half years. His art is like fully professional. It's crazy. Um, so Heather Rose says, what about value with colors? Some colors have darker value. Yes. So the, it really, it's an interesting question. Um, I'm not sure in reality if colors, some colors, like a color has darker values for effect. So for example, if I want a dark value with my black color, I just do this and you can see how dark it is, right? But if I try to produce the same value with my yellow, it will be impossible. So no matter how much paint I'll use, it will be impossible to go as dark. With that said, and you know, the red will also have a limited value, darker than the yellow, but not as uh, dark. Not as, uh, sorry, no, I brought the red and the yellow, but you get the point. So yes, but within every paint, you have a range. So you could go light with the black and dark with the red. You can do a lot of things with every color. Now, in reality, I think it's more of a philosophical question. Does a hue have a limitation in values? 
Um, it's interesting because if you open up Photoshop and you use a yellow hue, you can still pull it down all the way to black. So I don't know exactly what the answer to that is, unfortunately. But yes, some colors are naturally much darker and much lighter than others. The more practical advice would be to have colors that allow you for the range you're interested in. Uh, so nickel azo yellow, for example, is good because it's a yellow that has a range. Um, unlike a lemon yellow, that will be very limited, right? So have the option. Um, and if you want to go very dark, maybe you know that you'll use a few specific colors to get there, right? Uh, so I hope that helps just real quick. Uh, Marina Borel says, hi, welcome aboard. Uh, Lorraine, that's another cool name. Uh, Rumble, I really needed this video. I got frustrated six months ago and quit. This has shown me ways to get back into it and hopefully work my way through frustrations. Yep, yep, it's all about just pain. The, the, the thing is, all these frustrations are all in here. It's just, the, it's all internal. None of that um, is real. You know, it's real because you feel it, but none of it is really real. It's all in our heads. It's all self-manifested, everything. Every suffering that comes as a result of feeling frustrated with results, it's like, a decision you make to be frustrated with the results. You can decide to be happy with the results. You know, it's not easy necessarily to do that, but it is possible. And when it's easy, it's the easiest thing in the world. So I'm so happy that this could encourage you in a way, uh, Lauren, and, and uh, keep me posted. Pence, hopeful, I hope I'll be able to attend next week's stream. It's in the middle of our exams, but this stream is fire. So no one's stopping me. Oh, cool, cool. That's so awesome. I really appreciate it. TS, thank you. I've learned a lot. Appreciate your video so much. Looking forward to, sorry to every uh, Thursday to learn more, cool. Uh, baby, how do you know your art styles? I just learned that there are many art styles. Yeah, it's about experimenting. You play around with it until you create something you like. It's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that, oh, you're done, you learned everything you need to learn, uh, when in fact you didn't, and you have more to learn, and there is a style out there that doesn't exist yet because you're supposed to develop it. And once you develop it, then it will be truly your own and like no other. And when I got started, it worried me. I didn't feel like I have my own style. I wasn't sure what it will be or if it exists out there, if I can ever attain it. But what I learned with time was that it is there for everyone. And if you just follow your own self-exploration, you will find it. Um, even if you're, you feel like you won't and even if you're scared that you won't, you will find it. Trust me, it's there. It's there for everyone. Uh, the only thing that matters is the process of exploration. You have to practice on your own, find it on your own, find a way, because no one else can find your way for you. That's the bottom line. And if you can do that, people will start telling you that they recognize your paintings. That's what I, I was, uh, people started telling me that and I was like in awe that they can recognize my painting. And now I see it in other people's work. I can recognize a lot of people's work. Uh, even people are beginners, you know, I find that I can recognize their style very easily, actually, because we all have this. It doesn't matter who you are. You will have something about your work that is yours and distinct. So if you can work your way towards being able to portray that, you will get there. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, Stan Pierce, Stan, what's uh, mixture uh, for your darkest dark? Uh, usually I'll use a combination of French ultramarine and perlin red, or I'll use quinacridone rose and, and phthalo blue is great. It goes very dark. I'll put a bit of yellow to neutralize, but that's mostly it. I do plan, as I mentioned, I just got my neutral tint paint delivered. Uh, that's a good way to darken things without going too blue, which is something I tend to do a lot. Like here, all the darks are blues. I don't like that. It's not the thing I want to do. I want to improve that aspect in my work. Um, so neutral tint is a good kind of crutch, you know, I think. And just black paint, if you work monochromatically, that's good too. Of course I am. Have to go now. Thanks for the stream. I'll catch up uh, with what I missed later. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get the puppy. What do you think? For everyone who stayed this long, because we're going to wrap it up soon. Um, he's, he came here with the name Bok Choy. He's super docile, so I can just bring him over and show him to you. Uh, so let me tell, let, tell me if you want me to. Uh, John says, Liron, does there, uh, does there always have to be a focal point in a landscape painting? If there's just scenery, can the whole image become a focal point? Yeah, so John, I think this is a matter of perception. Let me explain. Yeah, Megan Kelly says yes. When it comes to the camera, let's keep 
Let's show you. Let's show you to the world. You cutie. Wait a second. Let me go full screen. Ooh, there he is. Shalom. You see he has a poor cast on his leg. Sorry, John. I'll go back to it in just a second. Drop a like for baby doggo. <laughs> He's so cute. Bok choy. We call him Bush. But yeah, bok choy. <laughs> Let me lower the angle a bit. Oh, you're the bestest. He's tiny. He's really tiny, you know? He's super tiny. He makes look, uh, Ruth look like a really fat kebab. Uh, okay. Let's get rid of the banner. We don't need any more likes. All the likes are taken care of now. Want to stand on the desk? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's not a good idea to, to have him learn he can stand on the desk and chew my paintings. Yeah. Go back to sleep now. Okay. We'll go back to rest. Good boy. There we go. <laughs> he immediately went into chill position. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah, he's tiny. He's tiny. I really hope we can find a home for him because he's, he's so cute. So he's so good. I love dogs. I'm pathetic. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> so let me get the few last questions and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so John, you say, uh, does there... Uh, yeah, okay. So it's a matter of perception. Here's, here's the point. Your brain will find a focal point. As the viewer of a painting, let me move this aside, we're done. Um, as the viewer of the painting, your brain will force itself to find a focal point. The only question is if you as the artist want to direct the viewer to a certain aspect. You can even decide that you want them to decide where the focal point is and paint stuff evenly. But even if you look at this crappy thing, you know, what is the focal point? I did not try for anything to be the focal point, but maybe it's the dark sections. Maybe it's this. You know, if I put this entire thing, I frame it and put it up in a museum. Of course, it will fit right in, right? You can see this in, in the MoMA. Let me actually add something to it. Okay, now people are wondering, what is that line? So if I frame this up and I put it in the MoMA, people will think this is the focal point. Why? Because it's red. So your eyes are immediately attracted. Everything else is cool, right? So it's all contextual. Your brain will be able to find a focal point even if you don't spoon feed your viewer as for what the focal point is. The question is, do you want one? If you want one, better set it up and all good work uh, I think makes the viewer maybe feel something, right? So even if it's super abstract, there's no nothing representational in it, the viewer knows what the focal point is. And it may be different based on a, a, every viewer. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, Barbara White, you show how much you love painting when you want to keep improving even on a simple study. Yeah, definitely. I, I have so much fun. And then Megan says, yeah, bring Poppy. Everyone loves seeing bok choy or bush. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, he's okay. We, they found him, the, I don't know what you'd call this, the rescuers, um, the rescuers found him, uh, with, uh, he had at least two fractures, one in every leg, both on the left side, so hind leg and front leg, <coughs> and that they had to, um, what do you call it? Now I have to find a word, sorry about that. Kibua? In English. Um, there's a word for it, and I just forgot it. Um, they have fixed, uh, splinted, I think. Splinting, right? So they had to splint it, uh, both legs. So he kind of is stuck with them it's straight. I mean, he can, so he can flex this part, but not this part. So this is kind of straight. So it's a bit awkward. Um, he doesn't look like he's in too much pain or anything like that. And he does run around and kind of tries to make Ruth play and fails because she's, she's, she's not too nice. Um, but he does run around pretty freely. So I don't, I think he's good and I think he will heal up really well. So yeah, they found him hiding. Like if, if you really want to be sad, they found him in a bucket hiding. Poor guy. But now he's all good. He has a foster home for now and hopefully he will find people. Uh, that will adopt him. Heather asks, what city are you in? I'm in Tel Aviv. If you know anyone in Tel Aviv who wants to adopt, 
uh, Bakhtari, that'll be great. Uh, there's just a bit of uncertainty as to whether he'll need like a surgery in the future or something like that. That can be very costly. Um, but based on what I'm seeing, uh, he'll probably be good to go once they remove the splints. So yeah. Uh, baby says, what do you do to your painting when done? Do you sell it? Yeah, I try to sell, of course, as many as I can. And I have them in piles. I just, but that's the great thing about watercolors. You can store them relatively easily. It's not like canvases that take up tons of space. Some of them are in sketchbooks. Uh, most sketchbooks are for sketches, but I, I'm sure at some point, maybe I'll consider selling one. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> it's funny. Ben says, I just hope when he grows up, he wouldn't uh, chew your Pokemon cards. Yeah, definitely. That's a problem because he chews everything. Even the graded ones that are in plastic, he chews plastic all the time. He tries to chew everything. He tries to chew plants, which isn't good for his health. So we always have to, to, to be very firm with him and tell him to stop. Don't, don't do that. And he still doesn't under, understand a thing. He doesn't know, like, come here. He doesn't know, stop. He, he has no idea. So you need to still uh, teach him uh freaking morons hey hello there welcome aboard we're actually close to wrapping this one up we've been going for about an hour and a half um let's see if there's any any other kind of last comments john says beautiful puppy thank you for another great live stream liron thank you so much john um army blank yes i definitely sell them so you can just go to lirongallery.com and find them there um i'm actually thinking of i'm gonna drop a link but i'm actually thinking of starting something fun where you know i take some of the very small paintings and do like occasional raffles or try to you know gift some um i think it'll be really cool to do that uh, maybe we'll do something like that in the discord maybe i'll do a challenge and then the winner gets a painting i think it could be fun because i have a lot of them here um and not all of them are in, in the gallery so i need to upload more. uh but yeah you can just go ahead here and you'll find them so yeah i think this is a good spot to end it i'll eat a bit we'll, we're meeting friends later so I want to make sure that I finish some of the work that I have remaining. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful weekend or rest of the week. Uh, happy that you learned, baby. I hope uh, I'll see you again next week's stream. And yeah, just a chill, fun one. hope you enjoyed it. Really informal. I like doing these, especially after all the interviews and stuff. It's a little more serious. It's fun to once in a while do something more chill, more relaxed, more easy for me. Uh, if you have anything you want me to cover in a future live stream, simply let me know in the comments. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you for being here. Um, very happy it was valuable and entertaining, hopefully. Uh, just let me know in a comment or whatever if you're watching it after the fact. I'll be happy to do it. I'm looking at the next round of uh, videos to do that will be more techniques and stuff like that. So just let me know and I will. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you again real soon. And Saturday's video is going to be a special one. So we'll talk soon.